All right, so what I have here today is an incentive spirometer. Um, this is a therapy that is used in post-operative patients that have just had surgery in their upper abdominal area um, or patients who have a history of COPD on top of surgery. Um, any contraindications in using this, it is um, contraindicated if the patient is not aware of the surroundings, they are not able to follow directions clearly. Um, or if the patient just is not able to perform this by themselves. So, say the patient is able to perform this, they are aware, um, they remember how to do this. Um, the incentive spirometry does come with this little pamphlet here. And what this will tell them is it does have um, instructions. Um, you can let them know that. It also has a little chart for both um, female and male. Um, so we'll say that the patient is Mr. Ross. He is a 50 year old male, um, same as 70 inches. So we'll instruct them. All right, so you're 50, uh, what is 70 inches tall. So we want them at 2,850 milliliters um, for their respiratory capacity. Um, so we will first begin by instructing the patient to fully exhale. Um, that way there is um, no air left in the lungs and let them know that and um, have them seal their lips tightly around the mouthpiece, preventing any air from escaping. That way they can um, focus their breathing using this um, and have them as they inhale, it's a nice deep um, inhale and that they don't do it too fast, nice and slow and that it stays within this um, best mark here, at least the top right here of the um, float. And right here we can mark where they're gonna be. So about 2,850. And um, they can reach half of that the first few times, that's fine, it's um, something to get used to. Um, therapy should eventually let them reach that 2,850, at least for Mr. Ross here. Um, once he reaches that, um, it means the therapy has been working or as long as it has been increasing gradually. So, um, instruct him how to use so. If you have your own, you can kind of demonstrate. So, um, since this is my own personal, in a way, um, I can kind of show him, Mr. Ross, how to do um, this therapy. So, fully exhale. I'm gonna seal my lips right around here the mouthpiece and as I exhale or exhale inhale I'm going to keep that um, flow in the best mark as best as I can so and as you're doing this um, instruct the patient I will instruct the patient that um, to inhale to their Capacity, what they're comfortable at the start. Um, it isn't. It is not easy to do, but eventually that expansion therapy will help with their atelectasis. Um, once they are able to demonstrate it to back to me without um, very much coaching, um, you they're able to do it on their own. Um, once they're able to do it on their own, you just have to periodically check on them, let them know that they can do about six to time six to ten times per hour giving some rest in between um, each therapy session. Um, uh, as you uh, periodically check on them, you're going to assess how their um, analexis is and the other vital signs, respiratory rate, um, if they have a fever, if that's decreased, if um, basically if any of their conditions have cleared up a little bit. and. Um, as long as they are doing like a breath hold, once they reach their max respiratory capacity, um, that is what will really help them um, with their expansion of their um, alveoli. And um, that is about it with the incentive spirometer. Um, just as long as the patient has had um, their therapies working for them and they have gradually increased their um, at least what they're getting with the spermder, that um, their, their therapy should be working.